As many of you have probably noticed over the past few years, early access games have become a very common industry practice when it comes to PC gaming, and it's undoubtedly given birth to many great games that would have otherwise never seen the light of day. Something that can't really go unnoticed, however, is in 2016, it seems like the vast majority of games that are released on Steam are early access titles. So for those of you that have had your head buried under the sand for the past few years, what exactly is early access and why does it exist? in the first place. Early access is basically a business model that really started to become popular from 2013 onwards when Steam introduced early access games to their store. The idea behind it is that gamers can get immediate access to games that are being developed and give feedback, working with developers to help shape the direction of the game. Upon the game's completion, you don't have to pay any extra for the finished version of the game. It's essentially a pre-purchase that gives you immediate access to a game that isn't yet finished. This system is has benefited developers by providing them with additional funding to complete games that they'd otherwise not have the funds to complete, have the ability to connect and build a community for their game early on, and get important feedback and bug reports. Sounds like a win-win system, right? Well, if done properly, it is, however, that's rarely ever the case, and I'm starting to believe that in some cases, early access can do more harm than good to a game if gone about the wrong way. First off, let's talk about the games that are considered early access failures and the impact that had on the gaming community's view of early access as a whole. The War Z. This was an early access game before early access was a big thing. It was horribly incomplete, and the devs banned anyone who posted negative reviews for the game. Eventually, it was renamed from The War Z to Infestation Survivor Stories to try and detach itself from the hate it was getting and trick more people into buying it. The game has since been abandoned, and Steam eventually stepped in and refunded everyone. Space Base DF9. This was another early access cash grab where the devs basically gave out the source code for fans to finish the game, despite having a ton of missing features and promising continued support. All the staff working on the game left and it has since been abandoned. Other examples of early access games where the devs just took the cash and ran consist of The Stomping Land, Earth Year 2066, Towns, The Dead Linger, Starforge and Wreckfest. Due to there being so many early access rip-offs, the gaming community as a whole are a lot more cautious when it comes to investing into these games than they would be otherwise. And due to the fact you can't refund games on Steam after you've got two hours or more playtime, it can be seen as a big risk, and if the game does tank, then you've basically paid full price for an unfinished game, which certainly leaves a bitter taste in your mouth. Another thing that doesn't help community perception of early access games is the fact that some of the biggest, most popular and successful titles have been in early access for almost three years at this point. Titles such as Seven Days to Die, Rust, Daisy, and Project Zomboid are all titles that have received quite a substantial amount of success when it comes to units sold. DayZ, for example, was estimated to have sold over 3.5 million copies, which at $30 per copy equates to roughly $105 million, yet has been in alpha for three years, making ridiculously slow progress. Rust is another survival game that's estimated to have sold over 4.5 million copies, which at $18 per unit adds up to an estimated $81 million made, give or take a few million. Regardless Regardless of how good these games are or how close they are to being finished, from an outsider's point of view, it doesn't look great when the most successful early access games on Steam still aren't perceivably finished, despite having what you'd expect to be more than enough time to be completed with a crap ton of funding. I suppose the question to ask really is how long is too long for a game to be in early access? Which is obviously a question that can't be answered with a set amount of time as some games and genres require a lot more work and development than others. You also need to take into consideration the size of the team working on the game, the experience they have, and a few other variables. But to me personally, when you can see a well-funded early access game taking a long time to update the game and keep the community in the loop when it comes to the status of development, then that's when I start to suspect that the devs are taking the piss and potentially using the veil of early access as a way to nullify critique aimed at their game. Another thing you'll notice is the games that stay in early access for the longest time are either survival games 
games or MMOs, because these are typically genres that don't have a set state that you can point to and say, the game's finished. There's always stuff that can be added, and most of the time for those games to continue to be successful, they need to always be adding new content to keep the players interested, regardless of whether or not the game's in early access. For me personally, I think the point where you should really consider coming out of early access is when you're thinking about paid DLC, or content sizable enough to be considered an expansion separate from the base game. Which brings me on to Ark Survival Evolved. Ark Survival Evolved is a game that went into early access on Steam on the 2nd of June 2015. Personally, I've played Ark quite a bit and it's certainly one of the best and most functional early access titles out there. However, when it comes to optimization, the game runs like arse. Recently, Ark released a paid DLC expansion for the game which pissed off a ton of people, resulting in a huge community backlash. You'd expect the developers to prioritise coming out of early access and optimising the game before even thinking about releasing DLC, but that obviously wasn't the case here, and a lot of people who have supported the game felt betrayed because of that. It's becoming more and more obvious to me that people are getting sick of early access games, and therefore won't spend money on them. It's definitely something I've seen a lot more in the comments of my videos anyway. And who can blame them when there's been multiple cases of players getting screwed by it in the past, as well as this grey area for when certain early access game genres can be considered finished. Before we talk about the good stuff to come out of early access, let's just talk about the problems developers using the early access model today face. Oversaturation. With so many early access titles on Steam nowadays, the people who are actually happy to support early access games are spread much more thin as well as there being much less people willing to support early access games now than what they used to be due to the reasons I previously mentioned and the risks associated with it. As a game developer, you need to come up with a concept that's either incredibly ambitious or hasn't been done before, otherwise you're not going to get the support you need to finish the game because why would people support your early access title over something that's slightly different and has released a finished product? This leads to the next issue. Promising too much and being too ambitious. Due to the need to stand out in order to get people to buy into your early access, developers often overpromise features that will make it into the game, thus resulting in a big community backlash when these things are missing, which obviously breeds more people unwilling to support early access games. Another thing I've noticed recently is the use of misleading trailers to get people on board. An example of this is an MMORPG that's recently dropped on Steam called Project Genome. It has one of the most epic trailers as I've ever seen, stunning graphics, perfect animations, an immersive alien world, space flight, mechs, pretty much anything you could possibly want in a sci-fi MMO, yet in game it has absolutely no resemblance to the trailer footage. Is it just me who thinks the trailer for a game should be representative of what it actually looks like, rather than an unrealistic vision? And all of this supposedly coming from a tiny Russian indie studio that haven't released anything yet and failed to raise 25k for a game on Kickstarter previously this year. A closer look at the trailer reveals the words in-engine footage rather than in-game footage for all of about two seconds in a shade of font that's easy to miss. I've played enough MMOs and seen many larger, well-funded projects fail to know that this indie dev has no hope of fulfilling what this game looks like in the trailer. It's nothing more than a marketing ploy to get people to buy into it. Too early for early access. Another common mistake I've seen a hell of a lot recently is games going into early access a lot earlier earlier than they possibly should, to the point of being completely unplayable or not having anything substantial implemented to give people even the slightest idea of what the finished product will look like. One of the main benefits of early access is building a community early on and getting feedback, but how can a community grow around an unplayable game when there's nothing to get excited about or have fun with? Which leads me to my last point. Hype. Hype is an important thing when it comes to selling games and it's more important than ever in getting people to invest into early early access. When games go into early access way too early without giving people anything to get excited about, they're basically shooting themselves in the foot as most people will refund that game, and they've essentially wasted a ton of free marketing in being a new Steam game. If the first few reviews show up as mostly negative, many people including myself browsing the new Steam games tab will scroll past that game without a second thought, and therefore it will eventually get buried and forgotten about. These are all huge reasons as to why I think 
think early access can actually be a bad thing for developers. It should only really be a thing they do at the latest stage their budget will allow, and if possible, they should avoid early access altogether as they'll benefit from better reviews, which result in more sales and overall more hype as people don't have to wait around to enjoy the game to its fullest. I suppose the only benefit early access can have in terms of marketing is people who have bought into it really early will become a lot more invested if they've given feedback and witnessed the game go from the early stages to a full release, thus resulting in a more dedicated player base. However, this can also be a bad thing if the game doesn't live up to expectations as the backlash will be much worse. But just to remind us all why early access is a good thing, here's a few games that have successfully been finished and received critical acclaim. Kerbal Space Program, Prison Architect, Armor 3, Divinity Original Sin, Broforce, Starbound, Grim Dawn, Crypt of the Necrodancer, Don't Starve, This War of Mine, Darkest Dungeon and Wasteland 2. A few examples of unreleased early access games that are making great progress so far consist of Subnautica, an underwater survival game that has themes to its updates to keep players interested. The devs also allow players to vote on updates, they've also integrated feedback forms directly into the game, as well as keeping players updated through their community Trello board which shows exactly what's being worked on, what needs to be done and what they've finished. Unknown worlds are leading by example when it comes to player communication and this is reflected when you look at the game's reviews. The Long Dark, this is another survival game that's making great progress and actually eavesdrops on player conversations to get feedback as well as posting frequent updates. The Forest is a survival game that shows just how much a small focused team of only four developers can accomplish. The game's updated frequently was a decently fun experience from the outset and is made more approachable by a reasonable price for what it is. Factorio is a game that came to Steam earlier in 2016 after already being in development for four years prior to coming to early access. This game has since received overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam due to being a highly polished, fun and addictive game right from the outset, as well as frequent updates and good communication with players. After all the research I've done in making this video, it's obvious to me at this point that all the early access games that are considered successful and have received the best reception by the community all share a common theme. They listen to player feedback, they have a well thought out roadmap and keep players updated with the progress of development, they have a solid gameplay experience before even going into early access, they have frequent updates that are often substantial enough to keep players coming back, they have their priorities in order when it comes to managing their resources, and they don't overpromise on what the end product will look like rather than just selling people a vision or concept. Overall, I do think that early access as a whole is a positive thing. It really does give smaller studios a chance of making something that would otherwise be out of reach whilst allowing players to help shape the future of that game. As with anything, there's always going to be scumbags that try to exploit the system for a quick buck, and I do think that Steam needs to have a separate refund policy when it comes to early access games to protect the consumer from abandonware. I suppose when investing into early access it's also down to the people buying into it to make an informed decision by looking at things such as how often the game's updated, what exactly is being promised and the player developer communication. But I think one thing we can say for sure is that early access is clearly something that's not going away anytime soon and for better or worse I'll personally be supporting a few of these games that have already proven themselves to be committed to fulfilling their promises to their player base. So that's it for this video guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know your thoughts on early access as a whole in the comments below. And for those of you that are new to the channel, my goal on YouTube is basically to help you discover quality new games and avoid the bad ones whilst not wasting a whole lot of your time in the process. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then please do consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, you take it easy and I'll see you again really soon. Slowly but surely getting to the point where I'd rather put my dick in a microwave than continue to play this game. I'd rather smash my head with a fucking ashtray than fight these monsters any longer. I'm done. I think I'm at the point now where I'd rather brush my teeth with compost than continue to play this game.